Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Kirsch One, and you were watching One Mind Syndicate. Today we continue talking about the horrible realities of the Warhammer 40K Universe as we talk about the Space Marine. Now this is an overview video. Uh, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. We post Warhammer 40K content every single day. We love the lore of Warhammer 40K, so you're going to find a lot of lore videos on here. Uh, but anyways, today we're going to be talking about the horrible realities of a space marine. So these are the the horrible things that they do that the organization of the Adeptus Astarte does to humanity. But with that said, let's get into 40 facts on the horrible realities of a space marine. The space marines of the Adeptus Astarte are the greatest fighting force of the Imperium of Man, genetically enhanced to serve mankind as humanity's ultimate warrior and entrusted guardianship of the Emperor's domain. Their vigil over the many sectors of the Imperium is seen as a blessing bestowed on humanity by the Emperor himself. When confronted with insurmountable threats, the leaders of the Imperium have always turned to the Adeptus Astartes to drive back the enemies of mankind and keep those not blessed with the gene seed of the Emperor and his Primarchs safe and secure. Even before the Emperor ascended onto the Golden Throne, Space Marines have been seen as sacrificing their lives to further the existence of humanity. The roar of drop pods piercing through the atmosphere is the sound of freedom, and the chattering of chainsaws slicing through the enemy is the sound of survival for the beleaguered Imperial citizens. But as the masses of battered Imperial citizens line up in the streets of liberated hive cities to cheer for their superhuman protectors, there lies a sinister and stark reality that only those outside the grasp of the Adeptus Terra can comprehend. A horrible reality of the true nature of the Adeptus Astartes. The terrible price humanity must pay to maintain these superhuman warriors runs high, for at the core of each battle brother lies a past of misery that was born on one of the countless horrible recruitment worlds under the Space Marines domain. In order to maintain a steady stream of resilient recruits, the Adeptus Astartes must maintain or sometimes even cultivate entire worlds where the human populations are under constant misery. These recruitment worlds are the epitome of savagery and anguish, and the pain and suffering of these people can be credited to the Space Marine chapter in charge of the world. Technology is purposefully denied to the humans of recruitment planets. A feudal society is preferred by the Space Marine chaplains, who see these types of cultures as the best testing ground for the recruits they require. Any tool that could decrease the amount of war, or lead humanity to live a more peaceful life, is destroyed by a space marine. In their eyes, the population of this world is in their debt, and their purpose is to breed recruits under oppression and regression. If humans on these worlds develop tribal councils or governments intended to stop the constant warfare between their own kind, Space Marine chaplains will purposefully destabilize these organizations. This can be done in many different ways, but a chaplain will first attempt to demoralize the population, sometimes by creating natural disasters that people are helpless to prevent. Earthquakes caused by thermal detonators planted at the edge of a tectonic plate, or tsunamis caused by torpedo missiles fired into a planet's ocean, or even blocking out the sun with enormous orbiting debris. The helplessness of humans in the face of a seemingly natural disaster would strike distrust. The ability for a council or government to provide protection would sound impossible to the population, which would lead to internal conflict, and tribes would begin to argue over resources, and the world would be plunged into war once more. The chaplain's thirst for hardened recruits would even push him as far as introducing terrible predators capable of slaughtering entire villages into these recruitment worlds. Giant cave trolls or destructive four-legged carnivores would be let loose in order to ensure the strong survive on these lands. If the population of humans manage to push back the predators, the space marines will simply introduce a more ferocious beast. The planet would be treated like a massive gladiatorial arena. The horrible disregard for human life doesn't stop on a space marine controlled planet. On other worlds, entire companies of space marines will gladly sacrifice entire populations of mortal men as long as the enemy is slain. 
Even though the Adeptus Astarte work in conjunction with the Adeptus Administratum, they do not have to follow the orders of any Imperial official from this branch, or any from the Adeptus Terra, Adeptus Mechanicus, or even the Adeptus Ministorum. They are a military organization with the power to work independently. Because of this, when fighting alongside other military forces of the Imperium of Man, Space Marines have been known to fight on their own terms. Many times they disregard the already established war protocols, battle lines, or doctrines, and instead take the fight to the enemy with little concern of the lives of other men and women on the battlefield. To the Space Marines, the soldiers of the Adeptus Militarum are there to fulfill one purpose, to die for the Emperor. Military maneuvers are adopted without hesitation even though they would open up the Imperial Guard to immense casualties. Whether one guardsman died or an entire company was destroyed as a result of an assault, a Space Marine cares little for the men he sees as tools. Tools put there for one purpose, and that is to bring death to the enemy. Even worse, military commanders trust the venerated tactics of a Space Marine. They would foolishly order a platoon to follow and fight alongside a Space Marine unit, only to watch them all die because no amount of extra firepower or Vox support could match the superhuman abilities of a Space Marine. Space Marine captains know of this trend, and they know even before a mission or an assault has begun of the major casualties an Imperial Guardsman unit will suffer, but they often say nothing. The Space Marines are bred to have no remorse for the countless deaths they will see on the battlefield. The death of a couple Guardsmen doesn't even register in their minds as noteworthy. On numerous occasions, the psychopathic tendencies of a space marine have manifested in the complete annihilation of a world. This is known in the Imperium as Exterminatus. Every living being on the planet is exterminated in one single military bombardment. While this action is reserved by most Imperial commanders as a last resort, only taken when extreme circumstances present a potential or actual extinction level threat to the entirety of the Imperium. Space Marines are less sympathetic to the use of this tactic. An orbital bombardment from Imperial warships is the simplest means of carrying out an exterminatus. Space Marine battle barges are often underpowered for an action this devastating, so they will call upon the resources of the Imperial Navy. Navy commanders are forced to view from orbit as cyclonic torpedoes rain down on a planet they were sent to defend but only a fool would ever question the judgment of a space marine. To the commanders on board their ships, their only relief is that at least they didn't have to use virus bombs. A space marine sees the sorrow mortals show towards each other as a primitive emotion. They see normal humans as frail, weak creatures given to the follies of temptation, greed, lust, and cowardice, all emotions they rarely feel, if ever. Along with superhuman strength, a space marine is empowered with a mind that has been pushed beyond the average of full potential. This allows them to have extreme focus on missions, pushing all other thoughts aside and only contemplating on victory or the destruction of their enemy. This means that just as a space marine disregards the safety of mortal humans over the successful completion of a mission, they also lack a sense of preservation for anything that could be seen as valuable to the Imperium outside of the mission. Space Marines have encountered Xeno races with technologies that could dramatically improve the living conditions of humanity, and they have burned the technology to ash along with its owners. Even human technology, like STC devices, have been discovered on space hulks infected with gene stealers, but the Space Marines would much rather lose the ancient knowledge of humanity rather than allow their enemies to live. Ancient relics holy to the Adeptus Ministorum, have made themselves known to a Space Marine Defender, only to be exterminated by orbital bombardment after extraction proved too difficult for the Adeptus Astartes. There is but one thing that can prevent a Space Marine from completing his mission, and that one thing is the destruction of their most hated foe, the Traitor Marines. The anger a Space Marine has towards the foul soul that cast their vows to the Emperor and betrayed their brothers is unimaginable. An entire Space Marine chapter would abandon a campaign in order to get a chance to persecute a renegade Marine. 
in the same manner, a space marine would gladly shoot through the body of an Imperial Guardsman in order to strike down a Chaos Space Marine. And stripped of all their reverence, a Space Marine cares little more than to kill his enemy. A human life is nothing to the bloodthirsty warmongers of the Adeptus Astarte. Stories have circulated of Space Marines going into a battle frenzy and allowing their thirst for destruction to spill over into friendly targets. On Armageddon, reports of the flesh terrors ripping and gnawing at the remains of Imperial Militia were reported by the Sisters of Battle. Nothing was done to these bloodthirsty savages, for no mortal man dare stand up to the superhuman might of a Space Marine. Other accounts tell of horrible rituals where Space Marines kidnap Imperial citizens and take them to their fortress monastery to be butchered and their blood drank. While these reports have been suppressed, it proves the deranged limits a Space Marine chapter can reach without any consequences. On other planets ruled by Space Marines, entire generations of men are kidnapped and never heard from again. Mindless servitors and menials are later spotted bearing a very similar resemblance to the kids that were once stolen by these angels of death. The practice of lobotomizing a failed recruit is a common practice by many Space Marine chapters. Even if the recruit or neophyte can live a long, peaceful life after failing to become a battle brother, a Space Marine will still drill deep into the skull and clear the mortal's mind of any memories and put him to work for the chapter. And those were horrible realities of a Space Marine. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, this was coming out. Um, the next Horrible Realities video is going to be that of the Chaos Space Marine. Um, so it is coming uh, hopefully next week sometime. Um, but if you guys have any suggestions for other cool Horrible Reality video ideas, comment down below. Um, if you guys have anything to add, anything horrible that you see that the Space Marines do that I forgot to mention, please comment down below. When I was coming up with this script, I really thought about, um, or I used as an example, the Jedi from the Star Wars universe. Uh, so the Jedi are basically the space marines of their universe. Um, and the whole idea that they were generals, they were, um, they felt like they were above everybody else. I really wanted to um, explore that a little bit more and kind of show that space marines are a little full of themselves and i mean they have every right to be just like the jedi have every right to be um a little full of themselves because they have the force and space marines have the gene seed um so they can manipulate pretty much everything especially if you're a librarian uh so whenever you look at just like normal humans what would a space marine feel um and how would that translate to them being corrupted uh, not being corrupted to, as far as being like traitor marines because we're going to get into that in a separate video that's a concept all in itself um but the regular loyalist space marine who's loyal to the imperium loyal to the um emperor um what type of selfish what type of egotistical things go in their mind um and that being the uh disregard for human life uh, even though they are here to protect humanity, they kind of see humanity as ants. Um, if if a couple ants die, you know, not much is going to happen. As long as we keep the queen alive, it's all good. And that's kind of like the concept that I was trying to put out uh, while making this video. It's all about keeping the emperor alive, keeping the queen alive, uh, and then the rest of the soldiers are don't really matter. More can be bred later on. But like I said, guys, if you have any ideas for any other horrible reality videos, just comment down below. If you guys like what we do uh, and you want to support us, jump on over to Patreon. A simple dollar a month helps us create more videos for you guys. If you can't, we understand. Simply by liking, commenting, and sharing, it helps out the channel. So you hitting the little bell notification icon, you sharing this on Twitter, uh, and whatever forum that you guys um, check out, it really helps out the channel. Uh, and it helps us create these uh, these types of videos where we create our own scripts. Thanks for everything, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. This is Gershwin with One Mind Syndicate signing out.